Well, good morning. Welcome to Epiphany on this beautiful day that God's given us. Nice weather outside, at least for the moment. Today I'm going to be talking about a Christian's look at the vaccine for the coronavirus. I had someone ask me about that, how the Lutheran Church felt about it a couple weeks ago. And it's the first time in my entire ministry someone's ever asked me about a vaccine. And I just thought, well, that's kind of an anomaly. And then last weekend, I sat down, I was watching the news, and I watched two different churches on the other side of the country where the pastors were being very vocal against it. So today, what I thought we'd do is take a biblical look as best as I was able to do this week. And what does the Bible say about vaccines in general? And we'll apply it in this case to the coronavirus. But is there any guidance God gives us and how we should view it? Two things I'm not going to do. I know that this particular vaccine's got enmeshed in the politics, so that's not part of today's sermon. And also, I'm not going to tell you whether to get it or not. Instead, I'm going to tell you what I think God's Word says and let that be your individual liberty. So that's where we're headed with today's message. So let's go ahead and get started with our first hymn. And we also remember that we're worshiping with those online at this service as well. So may God bless all of us as we worship him on this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, the unfolding of your words gives light. Your word imparts understanding to the simple. Keep steady our steps according to your promise. And let no iniquity gain dominion over us. Cast us not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. We are God's people, 
Through his word, he has given us wisdom and understanding to follow his ways. Yet there are times when we have chosen foolishness over wisdom, will for ignorance instead of understanding. Still, even now, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to him and ask for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we have ignored your word. We have lived according to our own commands rather than yours. We have chosen the wisdom of the world instead of your perfect wisdom. Forgive us, create in us new hearts, and renew a right spirit within us, so that we may follow where you are leading. For the sake of Jesus, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent, that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is from the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into the heart, but into the, their stomach, and then out of the bottle, body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them, for it is from within, out of a person's heart. The evil thoughts come sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, 
malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In July 2020, I volunteered to be a part of the phase three trial of the coronavirus vaccine. In August 2020, I was screened and accepted into Moderna's phase three trial. It's a double blind one where at the time 50% of the participants of 30,000 would receive the vaccine and 50% would receive the placebo. And so I received my first injection on this, pardon me, September 11th and my second one on October 9th. From the beginning of the trial until October 2022, I made an agreement to keep regular office visits at their clinic near the hospital, give nine vials of blood on each visit, get regular nasal swabs every visit, collect saliva samples, be present for weekly phone calls, keep a weekly diary of my health, of potential exposures to the virus or changes in my health. And if I get any symptoms of COVID-19, participate in daily symptom monitoring and more lab tests. I really didn't do this for altruistic motives, for the greater good of humankind, but rather, I wanted to decrease my odds of getting COVID-19 when we were going through a summer of high spikes. And I thought that by being an early recipient of the vaccine, that greater chance, I should say, that I would avoid having to get it and then not be able to minister to you during a critical time in our lives. Well, as Operation Warp Speed accomplished its goal and vaccine distributions were looming, Moderna faced a dilemma. Do they keep the trial still double-blinded for the remainder of the 25-month period, or will they lift it and let people know whether they got the vaccine or a placebo and then go ahead and vaccinate those who received the placebo? Well, they decided to go ahead and unblock the trial so people would still stay with it rather than getting the vaccine elsewhere. 
January 20th, I found out that I indeed got the vaccine last fall. Now, during that whole time and before that, whenever we would have prayers online, when we were worshiping online or in person, I would pray that God would deliver to us a safe and effective vaccine and that we'd be able to be produced and widely distributed as soon as possible. Well, I watched God answer that prayer in the midst of how long it seemed to take, when in reality it was such a short time. And for me, it's proof that if you want an answer that God answers prayers or proof of it, just look to that vaccine and the prayers we had Sunday after Sunday from early on. But not everyone feels that way. As of today, just over 60% of the United States is fully vaccinated. That number drops down to 47% here in Arizona. Excluding those who are medically disqualified from receiving it, those who aren't old enough, and even those who've had COVID-19, and they feel that their immunity is sufficient enough not to get the vaccine, that still leaves a lot of people sitting on the sidelines. And our pandemic is still ongoing. In some regions of the country, we all know that hospitals are at their capacity, some at their breaking points for treating those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. We know that people are still dying of it today. But few topics seem to elicit a stronger emotion or more opinions than in the decision whether or not to be vaccinated. Between the loudest extremes, Christians with honest questions often can feel under, I should often feel ignored, misunderstood, or even ridiculed when they speak out. Our faith should inform our daily decisions on everything, including whether or not to be vaccinated for the coronavirus vaccine or another deadly disease. How can we really know that these vaccines are safe? What about the ethical concerns with how they're made? And if you're healthy and not at risk, why should you be vaccinated? From all my research this past week, those seem to be the three questions that Christians ask the most. And they are important questions. Questions worth taking seriously. And the three that I would like to address today from a Christian perspective. And I'm going to do so in five points. Number one, it's important to acknowledge that within the Lutheran church, within our interpretation of scripture, we have never had objections to any vaccines. Rather, they're seen as God's good gifts like modern medicine and other medical procedures and drugs, helping the body to fight a virus that has the potential to be deadly is no different than taking a prescription to ward off a disease or having a medical procedure starting to do something like a skin cancer. So we don't see any biblical objections to it. Secondly, it behooves us as Christians to know that no vaccine is 100% risk-free, neither is any prescription medication nor any medical procedure. At the same time, when we opt out of a medical procedure or taking a specific drug or receiving a vaccine, we also may incur certain risks to ourselves or to others. So making a wise decision includes having an accurate understanding of these risks and weighing them properly. Why? Well, here's the reason. Corinthians 6.19 says, that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Christians can, and I think should, talk to doctors and their trusted health care providers and make a prayerful decision on whether or not to receive a vaccine, such as the coronavirus vaccine. While all vaccines today have been approved to date, with the exception of the coronavirus vaccines and our emergency youth authorization, with the exception of Pfizer that was approved this past week, we also know that this particular vaccine went through a rapid approval process. Now, innovations, when they come in the medical world, can sometimes be unnerving. 
when things suddenly don't take as long to heal from as they used to, or hospitalizations aren't as long for a hospital procedure, or maybe it's now outpatient. And the coronavirus approval process was similar to that. A lot of the red tape that would take months to go through approval process, those were fast-tracked to be able to get through. Concurrent steps were taken at the same time. And of course, the phase three trial was not waited until completion. Those are valid concerns for Christians to think about, just like when they're presented with any other new drug or procedures. If a Christian is still conflicted after talking to their trusted medical advisors, talk to the loved ones that are affected by it, or close friends. But with all important decisions, when it comes to safety or something else, go to God in prayer. There's too many verses in the Bible where God promises to answer us when we go to him seeking his guidance. I don't need to remind you of that. Number three, few Christians have had questions about how the coronavirus vaccine is produced. I never knew this until I saw those objections the past week. But there's concern that some vaccines have been produced using fetal cells from abortions. And the question is, wouldn't that make it off limits for Christians? And I did some deeper research this past week into that very fact, and I found that no abortions were performed to supply the cells for the coronavirus vaccines, nor do the resulting vaccines have any human cells or fetal material in any way. However, I learned this, it's interesting. The current FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccines have been tested using human fetal cell lines, as many other medicines today have been, like the measles vaccine or polio vaccines or treatments for polio, pardon me, diabetes, Parkinson's, or HIV. But those cell lines, and I'm not completely understanding of the science, I do know have originated from fetuses that were aborted, several of them from the late 60s and early 70s. Now, interesting, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod can have an opinion on almost everything. But for this particular issue, there's never been an opinion developed. So what's a Christian to do if cell lines come from originally abortions that were done for several fetuses in the late 60s or early 70s. Well, I tried to chew that around and work that through, and here's where I landed. If an adult was murdered, outright murdered, but they had consented previously to donating their organs on their driver's license, I see no Christian ethical issue of someone else benefiting from those organs from that situation. So I don't think there's any issue with those cell lines. But that's a personal opinion. Number four, we do have a biblical obligation to love and protect each other. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, God commands it. In your relationships with another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus by taking the very nature of a servant and not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. We're also created to recognize that we live in community. That it's not just about us, but it's your fellow Christians sitting with you. And that body of Christ is the Christian church on earth. We need to understand that decisions we make individually can impact those around us. We live in a country that's very much individual and Prizes personal liberty. But personal liberty is not a value in the Christian church. It's to love your neighbor as yourself. It expands to the person next to you. Now, just as your own personal primary care physician looks at your own health, so there's public health experts that look at the health of a population. In any community, there will be those who are particularly vulnerable to a disease or who have been medically unable to get a vaccine because they're too young, and they're still at risk for catching it. We know that if enough individuals in a community are vaccinated, the probability of catching a virus or a bacteria 
greatly reduces. You may have little fear that you'll catch the vaccine. You haven't been vaccinated and you're not in any high risk group. But it still is worthy to consider how your decision might affect others. What we do know is that the majority of infections are mild. Those age 60 plus are more at risk, especially those who have existing conditions or multiple conditions. And the fatality rate is about 0.7 to 3.5. 4%. But I kind of look at the statistics a little bit differently. It's been a tragic year and a half because four of our members, guests, and friends have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and died from it. Certainly when it comes to communicable diseases, we should be concerned about our neighbor as we would ourselves. And that's exactly what Jesus meant when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Lastly, what about Christians who are on the fence about the vaccine or those who are against it? If you're on the fence, I would encourage you to educate yourself about the vaccine. Consult your trusted health care advisors or those who may be impacted by your decision. And in prayer, God, seek God's will for your life using his living words and letting the Holy Spirit guide your decisions. That's being a Christian. And for those who choose not to be vaccinated for whatever reason, we are to remember in the body of Christ the words of James. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We are bound to respect the consciences of fellow believers who share the same commitment, the same faith in Jesus Christ, and to follow his will. Paul urges us in Romans, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. And let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide to never put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother or sister. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected us all. But the very last thing the Christian church wants or desires is to let that virus cause divisions among us as Christ's body. So we respect the decisions that we may not agree for the sake of unity and for the sake of Christ's body. And now in the words of Hebrews 13, May the peace of God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, and the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do as well, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that whenever we face a decision where people dissent from it and then people decide to consent to it, that we come to a crossroads in our own life, making a decision for ourselves and for those we love and those around us. The coronavirus vaccine decision is no different than any other moral decision we might make, any other decision for our personal health or any decisions that we make in our daily lives that will impact ourselves and others. We ask that you would grant us a rich supply of the Holy Spirit, that of all the noise in the world around us, that we would listen to you and seek your guidance. We thank you for the good gifts of modern medicine that you give us. We thank you for medicines, for medical procedures, and for preventative actions like vaccines. This is no different than any other decision and we ask that you would guide us in it. And when those take a different approach than we have taken and perhaps are very vocal about it, let us exercise charity and love, especially within the Christian church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now let's express our common unity in the Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed, and I invite you to stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all people who serve in various vocations, that they be given creativity, wisdom, understanding, discernment, and courage to follow where God is leading. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who celebrate good news of births and birthdays, anniversaries and baptisms, success at work or at school, and anything else that is worthy of praise, we thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray for the comfort in the face of grief. Help them to grasp firmly our hope in the resurrection and eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern in this nation and throughout the world, that they lead and serve according to God's wisdom rather than the wisdom of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all pastors, teachers, church planters, missionaries, musicians, and servants in your church, that God's word rules their lives and overflows into the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who light the salt, for all those who fight the assault of Satan, that they find strength and protection in the whole armor of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, injured, and recovering, that, the, that God would grant them healing according to his good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we com commend for all for whom we pray, Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he is betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. And you may be seated. <laughs>
invite you to stand. Now may the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray together. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And please be seated.